if the DEA decides to act and make examples, you're going to see a lot of people who you know, who you follow, perhaps even doing prison time, if not facing huge, huge fines. Boom! Boom! What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, CEO, MTS Nutrition, SARMS. Hot topic. I have videos on it. Um, there's been a few channels taken down because of it. What are SARMs? I've done a ton of videos on the legality of SARMs. My issue isn't with the efficacy of SARMs. I'm not here to debate that. It's with the legality of SARMs and being that they are not legal per se, and we're gonna get into that in a second, the quality control of the manufacturing isn't there. They cannot be manufactured in a GMP or NSF facility, which means that we really don't know the quality control or if what you're taking in that bottle is really in that bottle. That's been my argument all along. Now, new legislation introduced yesterday in the US Senate would give the DEA, the Drug Enforcement uh, Administration, power to enforce against SARMs. What are they? They're synthetic drug designed to mimic the effects of testosterone and are unapproved for use in dietary supplements, but have been skating by in what some found to be a loophole, which I'll explain how that might come to bite them in the butt. So the SARMS Control Act of 2010 introduced yesterday by Senators Orrin Hatch and Sheldon Whitehouse, who's a Democrat, Hatch is a Republican, would add SARMS to DEA's list of Schedule Three drugs to ensure that SARMS are regulated similar to anabolic steroids. This would basically put SARMs extending the power of the DEA that they have under the 2014 Designer Steroids Act, Control Act, and it would include authority over SARMs. Schedule three drug is a big fucking deal. That means jail time's involved and it's really fucking illegal. Basically, it's putting them on the same playing field, same level as steroids themselves. Now, here's the problem. Here's why this is gonna go through and here's what I think is gonna happen now. I have been speaking about this subject to a good friend of mine who happens to be one of the top attorneys in this industry. And um, the guy, he's a great guy, and we just speak kind of off the record on legal stuff going on and, you know, basically the overall landscape of things. Um, so anyway, here's why this is a big deal. One is Orrin Hatch is the guy who basically saved ephedrine for us for a long time. Orrin Hatch is our dude. Orrin Hatch has been working with the dietary supplement industry since I was at Weeder Publications in the early 2000s. I remember him coming and giving a little speech at Weeder. Like we were deep in that guy's pockets. Like Orrin Hatch is all for dietary supplement freedom, Deshay, he's the dude. When Orrin Hatch makes a bill to ban something for dietary supplements, everybody's going along because he's usually the only one raising his hand like, yo, that needs to remain free. Another thing is this bipartisan, okay? When we had, when, uh, when George Bush actually won the election um, back again, this is a long time ago, George W. Bush, I remember, and I, again, this isn't my opinion, it's what was said, I remember American media in a meeting saying we have a few extra months because of the outcome of the election. When you have both parties coming together on a bill to ban something, it's gonna be extremely, extremely, extremely hard to not pass that through. So this is going through. Another thing is too many support this within the industry. Our watchdog groups, our consumer rights groups, they're all for the banning of SARMs. What usually saves things like DHEA is the anti-aging people. The anti-aging people have tremendous voting power. The baby boomers are tremendously powerful, not only as a population, but as lobbying groups. And basically, let me list this out from this article, article on nutritionaloutlook.com. Following the introduction, these fellow industry associations, which you know, I'm not gonna say which I belong to or don't, uh, plus Travis Trigar, president and CEO of the US Anti-Doping Agency, showed support. This includes the American Herbal Products Association, um, Consumer Healthcare Products Association, Council for Responsible Nutrition, which is a big deal. It's a big deal. Big deal when they get involved. Um, United Natural Product Alliance, and, um, and I'm sure everybody else. <laughs> so bottom line is, there's nobody fighting this. SARMs are gone. Now, Schedule 3, being that they've been on the market, what does this mean for those companies 
large companies, let's say there's a couple large companies who've gone clean since their SARM days, actually become pretty viable non-SARM companies. When they're a Schedule 3 drug, the thing is, I was speaking to my buddy here, and um, you know, the DEA, and I'm gonna quote, is going to quote, rain fire on them, unquote. And that's this guy's legal opinion on what's gonna happen. Um, his thing was, you know, this should be a lesson for the dietary supplement industry, for manufacturers, to consult with their attorney before doing things. Honestly, I don't think any of these manufacturers thought that doing SARMs was a legal thing to do. I think they thought we're gonna get in, sell as much as possible, make as much money as possible, regardless of the hepatoxicity, suppressive effects that these have on consumers, and we're going to go in there, we're going to make as much money and get out before the government comes down. Unfortunately, I don't know of the statute of limitations, but what I know is that the people who sold SARMs can still be in legal shit, including jail time. So those people you see posting their awesome cars and actually making a clean, good and responsible living now, at least it appears from the outside looking in, the shit they did in the past might come back to bite them right in the buttocks, as Forrest Gump said. So what we need to look at here, a couple things. One is there is not one person who manufactured SARMs who didn't know the risk going in. There was never a loophole. These are not Deshaies compliant at all. These are, 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 are very evidently um, drugs. And these are things that we knew were gonna be illegal, but we knew there'd be a window before they start really clamping down on it. Now that they're clamping down on it, you're seeing people from research peptide companies go to jail. You're seeing a lot of things happening. So when the government acts, it might take time, such as with the scandal we saw with the, um, the online steroid sales, it took the DEA two to three years to build their case. The DEA will take their time. But when they come down, they will come down pretty hard. And my fear, because I do not wish any harm upon anybody, and a lot of these guys who did this in the past are really good people. This is just me speaking openly, honestly, and clearly into what I think will happen based on the opinions I've gotten from attorneys and people within the industry and people out there. If the DEA decides to act and make examples, you're gonna see a lot of people who you know, who you follow, perhaps even doing prison time, if not facing huge, huge fines. Remember, pro-hormones were banned. Pro-hormones were banned. They weren't selling them anymore, yet the owners of bodybuilding.com, Jeremy and Ryan DeLuca, as well as Dave Nelson from iForce and others, it's all public information, they didn't just have fines on their company. They had to personally pay seven figures plus in settlements for selling these um, adulterated supplements. So bottom line is just because they're out of it now, I don't think they're gonna skate free. However, we're gonna assume this is gonna pass. The only way I will do a video is if this doesn't pass. This is my last video on SARMs. They're gone. They're going away and those who manufactured them are gonna be in deep shit in my opinion. Um, I never got into them, never sold them, I'm good to go. Um, however, you know, looking at this, you know, um, just, just looking at what's going on in the industry, it's just time will tell who they come down on. But as a consumer, I wanna let you know, the government's not interested in you. If you bought Austrian or another SARM, don't worry, DEA is not gonna knock on your door. They're going after the big fish and you buying a dietary supplement over the counter from a supplement store, that's not your fault. But the retailer who sold that, they're gonna be in deep shit because class action lawsuits are gonna follow. What the DEA doesn't take care of, class action lawsuits will, and those will put a hurting on anybody who has or who does sell SARMs. That's just my opinion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. Share this video because it was awesome and I did actually do research. So um, appreciate everything. Thanks, guys. I'm Mark Lobiner, TigerFitness.com. The articles I referenced are down below, including a press release from Senator Orrin Hatch of the great state of Utah. And that's not a game.